The phenomenon is the following. Okay, what we say is that the rate in many uh, phenomena in nature, the rate is proportional to the size of the population. What's it, what does it mean? If uh, a certain population is a function that describes as f of x, then the rate will be the derivative, f prime. We're going to say that f prime is proportional to f of x. Or uh, if we're talking about, uh, if we want to remove the proportionality, uh, then you can say that f prime of x equals some constant times the function. Okay. We call it K. When it comes to population, then we can say that uh, if let uh, P of T be uh, a, pop a, a population function, then in this case we're going to say that P prime of T is some constant times P of T, okay? Or we, using Leibniz notation, we're going to say dP dT equals K P of T. This is essentially, uh, these are essentially differential equations, as you have a function and its derivative in, in one equation. So, <clears throat> Uh, what is, uh, we, we actually can express it as a law, and this is the law of natural growth, and on the law of natural decay. So the law of natural growth looks like this. The key word is growth, and we're going to say that the law will be if you have use y this time, dy dt equals ky, and k will be positive in this case. Okay, and then you have the law of natural decay. We're going to say that uh, the same th differential equation, dy dt equals ky, except k is negative. And so that constant uh, is, um, is really a ratio. If you think about it, the constant k is a ratio between the derivative and the function. Because in any event, we, we have k equals y prime over y. Okay. This quantity, we have a name for it. And again, depend whether you have um, uh, growth or decay. We call it the relative, the relative uh, growth rate or the relative decay rate. Uh, we also call it RGR or RDR depends on the uh, on whether we addressing decay or growth. So <clears throat> K, so we, we, we say that we have relative growth rate R G R it means that K is positive and then we have relative decay rate 
or dr k is negative you you are uh, learned that in in uh, whether you took it in uh, you learned it in college algebra or in pre calculus algebra you learned that the difference between uh, say uh, linear function and exponential function the growth rate of a linear function is constant but the growth slash decay rate of or the rate in general of an exponential function you said it's a relative rate it's we called it the percent rate of change you remember that term percent rate of change so uh, so here's a little note to remind you that really R G R or R D R are also known as AKA uh, percent rate of change. Okay, so this is a little note. Okay, percent rate of change. That's that's what it means. Now here's a theorem for you. Okay. Again, going back to the differential equation and the theorem, it's a well-known calculus theorem. Um, it's, the statement goes like this: the only solution to the differential equation. And here we can write it as uh, dy dt equals ky, as I wrote right here. I'll write it as y prime equals ky is given by y as a function of t equals some constant c e to the power of kt. We're going to prove this theorem uh, later in the semester when we talk about integration. Uh, but um, the one thing that you can recall, remember k equals y prime over y? We've seen y prime over y. What was y prime over y? Do you remember? It was the derivative of y, natural log of y. Okay. So actually, this will lead to the proof here. Uh, so it, it's the base of the proof, but we need to use to integrate. Uh, so when we talk about integral integration uh, later toward the end of the semester, uh, we'll approve this particular theory. All right. Uh, the I want to address the issue of uh, the number c or the coefficient c. Go ahead. Yeah, that's eventually we'll get into half-life and carbon dating and all of that. Um, we, did, we did it a lot in pre-calculus. We'll, we'll touch on it in this course as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, you'll see some interaction with chemistry. Also, if you read... Uh, and that, that the reading assignment that I gave you, section 3.7, you'll see some connection to stuff that you see in chemistry. Uh, you'll see how the rate as a, as a derivative applies to chemistry. Uh, when we we'll talk about application of the derivative, I'll go back to this and I'll give you at least one example that involves uh, the rate of change of concentrations of uh, solutions, of chemical solutions. Uh, what happened during a reaction? That will be one of the applications. But uh, one more thing to wrap this up. Let's say that the y of t represent a population. So if, uh, if y of t represent a population, Uh, 
that is the function of p of t, uh, then we we have the uh, the PERT model. Well, bef <clears throat> I don't know if you re remember or use the term PERT, P-E-R-T model when it came to growth. Uh, let's see how this works out. Uh, first of all, we see we have uh, to deal with the coefficient C, Y of T equals C e to the KT and and the Y sub zero or Y of zero, which we call Y sub zero equals C e to the power of K times zero which is simply C. So we can see that we can replace C with Y sub zero. Uh, so uh, Y of T equals Y sub zero E to the KT. And if we use P of T, then we have P of T equals P sub zero E to the power of KT, which is the PERT model for population, okay, uh, where Uh, where k equals r uh, equals the rate. Okay, so, and you learn that uh, in prior courses, but remember the definition of e that I gave you yesterday. And, uh, and it works well with the compounding interest if you replace e with the limit definition. I want to give you a quick example to wrap this up. 